Welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In this video, we're going to discuss a way to build the core of a commander deck around Jedit O'Janin Mercenary as its general. <laughs> Thank you for choosing MTG Burgeoning for your Magic the Gathering content. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and consider becoming a subscriber. Doing so supports the channel and makes you eligible for our various subscriber reward series. If you would like to support the channel further, then click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. There you can join our ongoing Pack Wars series as a one month supporter or ongoing member. Or, try joining Pack Wars for free by commenting on every MTG burgeoning video in a month. We strive to offer creative rewards through our various Patreon tiers. So if Pack Wars isn't for you, then something else will be. Links to our content and various subscriber reward series can be found in the description below. Send us an email, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. We are your channel for all things magic. Jedit O'Janin Mercenary is a 3-3 cat mercenary for 1 in Selesnian colors. Whenever Jedit or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay 1 green mana. If we do, then we create a 2-2 green cat warrior creature token with Forest Walk. The vision for the core of this build will focus on sculpting a cat tribal deck in Bant colors that will take advantage of Jedit's token creating ability. By amassing a cloister of cats, most of whom will be unblockable due to their forest walk abilities, we will overwhelm our opponents and claim victory through combat. Or in other ways. Jedit cares about legendary creatures, and we care about cats. So, we begin the core of this build assembling an array of legendary cats. Brimaz, King of Areskos, is a 3-4 with Vigilance, and whenever he attacks, we create a 1-1 White Cat Soldier Creature token with Vigilance that's attacking. Whenever Brimaz blocks a creature, we also create a 1-1 White Cat Soldier Creature token with Vigilance that's blocking that creature. Brimaz triggers Jedit's token ability, and he helps to populate our side of the battlefield with Cat Creature tokens whenever he attacks or blocks. Kahira, the Orphan Guard, also has Vigilance, and is a 3-2 for 1 in any combination of 2 Selesnia colored mana. Kahira gives our cats plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance. Kemba, Ka Regent, is a 2-4 for 1 in 2 white mana, and at the beginning of our upkeep, she creates a 2-2 white cat creature token for each equipment attached to her. Miri, Cat Warrior, is a 2-3 with First Strike, Forest Walk, and Vigilance for just 1 and 2 green mana. Miri, version 2.0, the Weatherlight Duelist, is a 3-2 with First Strike for 1 in Selesnian Colors. Whenever she attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat, and as long as Miri's tapped, no more than one creature can attack us during each combat. Prava of the Steel Legion synergizes with our cat strategy amazingly. Prava is a 1-4 for 2 and 1 white mana, and as long as it's our turn, Prava gives creature tokens we control plus 1 plus 4. There's also a built-in token producer, but they're soldiers and not cats. Rigo, Streetwise Mentor, is a 2-2 for Selesnia White Azorius mana and enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Whenever we attack a player or a planeswalker with one or more creatures with power one or less, we draw a card. Granted, most of our cat's powers are higher than one, but the risk of whiffing is worth the reward of possibly drawing cards, and Rigo does synergize with Jedit and our cat tribal build. Now that we have a reasonable number of legendary cats with mana values of three in the core of this build so far, including our general, let's take advantage of this dynamic by adding combo pieces that will exploit Jedit's token-producing ability. The first card of this combo is Alurin. Alurin is an enchantment for 2 and 2 green mana that allows any player to cast creature spells with mana values of 3 or less without paying their mana cost and as though they had flash. Yes, our opponents benefit from Alurin's presence on the battlefield, but we will benefit from it more. The next card of this combo is Tangle Root. It's an artifact for 3 generic mana that gives a player 1 green mana each time they cast a creature spell. 
Yes, again, our opponents benefit from Tangle Root's presence on the battlefield, but again, we will benefit from it more. Each time we cast a creature spell through a Lurin, we can use the green mana generated by Tangle Root to create a 2 2 green cat creature token with Forest Walk through Jeddit's ability. Now, we're going to exploit this synergy by adding a copy of Cloudstone Curio. Whenever a non-token artifact enters the battlefield under our control, we may return another permanent we control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. We cast a legendary cat with mana value of 3 or less through Alluren. This act triggers Tangle Root and adds 1 green mana to our mana pool. The legendary cat enters the battlefield and triggers both Cloudstone Curio and Jeddit. We stack our triggers accordingly, pay the green mana generator from Tangle Root to create a 2-2 cat creature token, and then bounce another legendary cat with mana value of 3 or less back to our hand. We continue this cycle until we have amassed an insurmountable number of 2-2 cat creature tokens, which we can use to win the game via combat during our next turn. We continue filling the core of this build with some higher mana value cats. Nizan, Revered Bladesmith, is a 5-4, and when he enters the battlefield, we search our library for an equipment card and reveal it. If we reveal Hammer of Nizan, then we put it onto the battlefield. If not, then we put it into our hand. Whenever an equipped creature we control attacks, we may tap target creature defending player controls. As we have included some equipment synergies in this core already, Nizan's presence will strengthen this theme in addition to further enhancing the legendary cat theme. Speaking of equipment theme, Raksha, Golden Cub, is a 3 4 with Vigilance, and if he is equipped, cat creatures we control get plus 2, plus 2, and have Double Strike. This could be game-ending when aligned with the creature tokens produced by Jeddit's ability. Speaking of equipment and Double Strike, Balan, Wandering Knight, is a 3 3 with First Strike, but it gets Double Strike if at least two or more equipment are attached to him. Balan has a built-in ability that allows us to attach all equipment we control to him at instant speed. That causes a lot of combat headaches for our opponents. Speaking of combat headaches for our opponents, Arabo, Roar of the Wild, provides plenty of those. At the beginning of combat on our turn, target cat we control gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Whenever a cat we control attacks, we may pay one and Selesnia colors. If we do, then that cat gains trample and gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is its power. Arabo provides cat buffing, which strengthens the combat theme of this build. Speaking of combat, Jazal Goldmane is a 4 4 with first strike and has a potentially game ending activated ability. If we pay 3 and 2 white mana, then attacking creatures we control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Notice that Jazal does not tap for its activated ability. This means that we can activate it multiple times during our turn as long as we have enough mana to do so. Speaking of enough mana, Jareth, Leonin Titan, is a 4-7, and whenever it blocks, it gets plus 7, plus 7 until end of turn. Jareth's Righteousness ability is not the only ability this cat giant sports. We can pay a white mana to give Jareth protection from a color until end of turn, and this powerful ability is both for defensive and offensive purposes. Speaking of offensive purpose, Jedetojanin of Ephrava is a 5-5 Forest Walker that creates a 2-2 green cat warrior creature token with forest walk whenever it attacks or blocks. Here is another example of cats making more cats. Here's hoping that our opponents don't develop any cat allergies to this combat-laden build. Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief, strengthens our combat theme even further. He enters the battlefield with our choice of a plus one plus one counter, a first strike counter, or a vigilance counter. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, if Denry has any counters, then we put the same number of each kind of counter on that creature. Vigilance and First Strike are two powerful combat abilities. If we can spread these counters among other non-token cats we control as they ETB, then our side of the battlefield becomes stronger and stronger. Another way to strengthen our ability to participate in combat is by weakening our opponent's ability to do the same. 
Crow's defense contractor is a 2-4 for one in Bant colors. At the beginning of our upkeep, we put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls. If this creature would be destroyed, instead the shield counter is removed. Whenever we put one or more counters on a creature we don't control, we tap that creature, goad it, and it gains trample until end of turn. So, the goaded creature has a shield counter and will attack one of our opponents during its controller's next turn. With Crows' ability, we are forcing our opponent's creatures to attack other opponents, which only speeds up our combat-enhanced clock. Let's complete the core of this build by optimizing and enhancing our cat tribal theme. Yavi Maya, Cradle of Growth, will make all of our 2-2 cat creature tokens from Jeddit unblockable, allowing us to swoop in for an easy victory. Since we're playing blue, let's include Leyline of Anticipation, particularly for setting up our aforementioned infinite combo. Giving all of our spells flash allows us to tap Gaia's Cradle or Itlamok Cradle of Growth during the end of our last opponent's turn and cast each component of our endless cat token combo. This is reasonable since this is a creature-based and creature-token-based build, and the more creatures we have, the more green mana we generate. We have an equipment theme woven into this build, and we already have featured Nizan Revered Bladesmith, so it makes sense to include Hammer of Nizan. When attached to a creature, the equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and indestructible, which is a great way to protect our general. Hammer of Nizan also has an auto-equip ability, as when it or another equipment enters a battlefield under our control, we may attach that equipment to target creature we control. Sword of the Parent is a strong combat-themed equipment that causes combat headaches for our opponents. Konda's Banner is another strong selection for this build. It can only be equipped to a legendary creature, which plays to the strength of the core of this build beautifully. Through its myriad ability, Blade of Selves will create additional copies of the legendary cat to which it is equipped, and due to the legend rule, only one will remain. This doesn't matter to us, because the tokens will trigger Jeddit, and if we have enough green mana available, we will create more 2-2 cat creature tokens. Speaking of more mana available, Druid's Repository is a fantastic payoff for combat-themed builds in green. Whenever a creature we control attacks, we put a charge counter on this enchantment. We can remove a charge counter from it and add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Since we have a lot of ways to generate a lot of mana in this build, let's add Helix Pinnacle as an alternate win condition. 100 tower counters later and we win the game. This video provided a blueprint for building the core of a commander deck around Jedit O'Janon Mercenary as its general. Removal spells, ramp, and the land base can vary from build to build, and also are dependent on metagame preferences and availability. The cards discussed during this video are suggested options for taking advantage of Jedit's token-creating ability, in addition to providing ways to optimize this theme. Let me know your thoughts about these recommendations in the comments section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.